The Army will conduct its first hypersonic test toward the end of this fiscal year, and the Army believes it will have live rounds on the missiles by the fall of 2023. Seth Cropsey, senior fellow at the Hudson Institute, former Deputy Undersecretary of the Navy, writing about hypersonic missiles in Defense News. Seth, welcome. It's good to see you again. You write about the importance of hypersonic weapons as a denial technique. What's that term mean? Uh, thank you, Francis. Good to be here. Uh, the single most important uh, ability of hypersonic missiles for the United States is to uh, circumvent, get around China's uh, access, anti-access and area denial strategy, which is to keep uh, American uh, naval platforms, ships, combatants at a distance uh, of at least a thousand miles from the Chinese mainland, which would uh, severely disrupt our ability to project power uh, into the South China Sea and also to communicate and support, uh, communicate with our allies and support them. So, uh, uh, that's where hypersonic missiles are of the most immediate importance to the United States, and we haven't done we haven't done enough about it. You write in this piece: stealth aircraft, low-cost, high-quantity warships, submarines, and unmanned systems will be critical in that uh, mission of penetrating access denial networks. Where do hypersonics fit into that landscape of of systems, Seth? Well, they uh, a large part of that. The answer to your excellent question, Francis, is what is our strategy? What is the United States and the Navy in particular strategy uh, for uh, deterring conflict and for uh, winning a war if it comes to that? Uh, that would make it much easier to uh, give a, you know, a definitive answer to your question, but uh, a general one is this, uh, and I'm repeating what I said a moment ago, but the, 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 the general idea is that the extreme speed and the distance and the range at which hypersonic missiles operate uh, make it extremely difficult for China to execute the uh, A to A D strategy that is, you know, their clear intent uh, f uh, from everything that we've seen from their increasing size of their missile arsenal to uh, the kinds of missiles that they're deploying uh, to their claims that they can hit a American a large American combatant at sea at a distance of a thousand miles. All of that uh, combined uh, is intended to prevent U.S. forces from uh, projecting power uh, to the Chinese mainland and to the South China Sea. And hypersonic missiles are one means uh, of allowing, uh, <clears throat> of being able to deter them by letting them know that they're at risk. You uh, also write in this piece, the more common public worry is that hypersonic glide vehicles on intercontinental ballistic missiles could transform the nuclear balance by obviating all air defense systems. Is that a worry that people should have, or is that an unfounded worry, do you believe, Seth? Well, I think it's a, a genuine worry. I think the chances of a complete transformation of... Um, our, of the Trident to a hypersonic-based system uh, in, in, the, you know, in the foreseeable future are low. I think the greater applicability of hypersonics is to uh, theater defenses and theater uses where they, can be, where, they, where they can be used by an enemy, for example, to destroy the defenses that we have for our, um, our air and naval bases in the Pacific. Uh, that... Uh, 
that idea of, of uh, the systems at the theater level is how you close this piece. Hypersonics deserve significant investment as offensive weapons, particularly at the theater level, as do missile defense technologies. What's your sense of the cues that you have so far, either through strategy documents or through statements uh, by some of the new Biden administration officials, that they might think the same thing that you do, Seth? Uh... I think it's a little bit early to uh, expect the Biden officials, uh, the Biden administration, to come up with a strategy. The previous administration um, had not uh, had not really produced a strategy worthy of the name for uh, deterring China. Um, I, I don't. I don't think that. Uh, uh, I do think that in many senses, the Biden administration will find itself, uh, if not in uh, spoken agreement with its predecessor, at least uh, thinking along the same vein. Uh, and that's simply because of what China is doing uh, in the in the Pacific, in, in the South China Sea. Uh, from Japan to Vietnam and uh, and around into uh, into the Indian Ocean, I don't think there's much much choice that I don't think the Biden administration is going to say that, that China is not a strategic competitor uh, or that there is no significant military threat that comes in the end of, that is emerging from the Indo-Pacific. But as far as strategy documents, yet um, we're waiting to see what comes out of the administration. Seth Cropsey, thanks very much for joining me. Always a pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you, Francis. My pleasure.